Friday. They're all, all days are the same to me, believe it or not. Unless I know I'm playing Call of Duty all day, then I know it's a weekend <laughs> or a day off. Otherwise, all days feel the same, give or take. And that's just the beauty of how I live life, man. I'm always positive. It's not cool to be positive, but yeah, I, I'm always feeling that way. I'm always in a great place looking for positive vibes. And, um, but I was, uh, you know, get back in the discussion of dating. What else is new? 2019 is not going great in that department. So for anybody that wants to know, I'll give them this audio. I'll be like, look, you want to know what's going on? Here, fucking listen to it. Have fun at it. You know, my my daughter has a boyfriend now. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, times are hard when your own daughter has a boyfriend in school and she's gushing all over for him. She's like uh, trying to talk to her friend. You know, these kids now, when they move and they have the iPod Touch, they can still stay in touch, right? You remember when you were a kid and someone moved to Texas? You were screwed. Like, you maybe received one letter and that was it. That was it. You are fucked, man. No one's calling each other. No one's staying in touch. You know? Like, you, you, you basically, you have this hope of, of staying uh, in touch, but it never happens, man. Just long distance. But nowadays, hey, you could be text buddies for years. You could be Facebook friends and and not meet each other, you know. That's just the way it is. So, but yeah, everyone's dating but me. And there was somebody out there just kind of talking about how frustrating it is. They, I guess they had a guy lined up to come over, and the guy just went ahead and said, "Hey, you know, I got other plans." I said, "You know, nah." I told her, "Look, girl. I mean, I hear you." But you don't make it seem like it's it's the girls deal with the same things that guys do. You don't. At the end, the women chooses the guy. Just always remember that. For the most part, women choose the guy. As far as who you want to let in. Trust me. I mean, I, I, I deal with it all the time. You think, I mean, girls always say, why aren't you with somebody? I'm like, I don't know. The girl doesn't choose me. I give somebody the time, but they just don't like what they're getting. And there was somebody that was talking about this on a podcast. I forgot which one, but I listened to so many. But it was one where the girl was saying that this particular person, a female, was being so picky about who they have in their life, right? And she's been single for 10 years. And she's saying, look, I mean, you're that that's a bit extreme. And I had a buddy of mine talk to me last night about it. And I said, look, I mean, I'm not really... As far as physical looks, is is I'm not going for anything over the top. Girl next door look that likes to work out. So just think of a of a cute little girl. No, she doesn't have to have big tits, big ass, just pretty face, not over the top makeup. Doesn't have to have fake a, anything. It's just more of just being relatively cute. She's happy wearing her glasses and her pajamas. You know, looking goofy, but looks pretty as well. You know, I like the natural look because. There's longevity to that, meaning that when 15, 20 years from now, she's not going to change much. Whereas if you, if you get somebody that's big or fake, you know, they have to keep that up. Although I will say there's some thick girls in the gym that I, I would definitely do. If they're hitting the gym like that, I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm definitely in. But it's very rare that you have thick girls with the curves that go to the gym often like that. To me, it's all about sustaining that look or sustaining your physical appearance and being in great shape. I was trying to look into life insurance policies. I, I have one through my job before, but I'm trying to up the ante. And I saw one of them was really cheap, right? But it was talking about how basically I need blood work. And I'm like, oh, my blood work's not going to come out good, so I need to get my ass in shape. You know? So there's things like that where... If, if I get in shape, guess what? It's going to be less money coming out of my pocket for my little one to have some money on the side, right, when I die. So I don't leave her high and dry and shit. So I got to work on that this year. Hopefully I don't die this year. <laughs> but going back, I mean, I, I just totally fucking derailed it, see? Um, but, yeah, I, um, you know, my, my criteria is not up the top crazy. It really isn't. And I come back to this mindset. When it comes to dating, I I saw this post and it said, I, "Don't be in a relationship unless they make your life better." And, and that's essentially how I feel. It's like I don't know what I want, but I know what I don't want. I, I know 100% sure 
I don't want to deal with certain things. I don't want to deal with providing financial stability to a woman. For example, I would like a woman that just has a career, pays her own bills. I don't think I'm asking for too much, but it seems that women out there, uh, there's th women do work, but they're looking for a guy to provide them a better lifestyle. And I'm not going to buy into it. Meaning I would like to be with somebody that, hey, listen, you pay for your trips, you pay for my, I had a friend telling me that. He was in a relationship with somebody that went ahead every time she paid half. She paid half. She would refuse it. And it was pretty cool. Like, that was a pretty cool experience. It didn't work out. But that's one thing he admired about her. So I know there's women out there that take pride in letting the man know, hey, listen, I'm not here for your money. I just want to hang out with you. That's one thing that I would like to do. Even though I don't make a lot of money, but you know how it is. You girls just go ahead and want a guy to pay for your meals and pay for everything, pay for those trips, pay for those experiences. And I just don't want to do that at all. I think that's definitely a no-no for me. A no-no for me as well is somebody that maybe is still uh, emotionally not in a good place. They're not emotionally independent. Because it's one thing to work a job. What I've learned is there's one thing to be on your own, pay your own bills. That's one thing. But if you're not emotionally there, like you're needing somebody to cling on, then that's a really bad thing for me. Because what that lets me know is that you're going to be demanding a lot of my time, a lot of my free time. And I go back to the balance. I like a balance. So I like somebody that is a little bit emotionally independent, where obviously we kind of help each other through the journey of life. I don't want somebody that's like, fuck you, I don't need you. Like, we need each other. I need people, right? I need friends. I need people in my life. But it's not to the point where I'm draining them or being a negative in their life, right? But we all understand we have peaks and valleys, for sure. But if you're a person that every day... You're coming home and complaining about your job and you're letting it out. And you're too drained to do anything else because work has just had you upside down. Then, no, I don't want to be. I want to be with a person that's able to compartmentalize and not use me as a punching bag. Right. Then you have a, another major component. I feel is a problem is where people are looking at you as, as your hobby, which interlaps a little bit with uh, being dependent from somebody is that there's a lot of females out there that make you a hobby. They make you everything and anything. And I I don't believe in that. I believe that you should be able to have your own life. Whatever it is, I mean, we'll slowly intermingle, but ideally I would like somebody that likes to do their marathons or, or do does their cross uh, CrossFit, right? And then they go have wine with the girls or, or, you know, they have something going on. They're doing something. You know, they have, they have their job. They have their kids, if they have kids, and then they a couple days a week they do this, whatever that is, and then we make time for each other. You know, I don't want to deal with somebody that, like they did last year, talking about uh, you got to be there at least three times a week. I got to see you three times a week at least. I'm like, what? Child, please. Like, I'm not, I'm not making that kind of commitment. I got to see you three times a week automatically if I'm seeing you. No, that's not gonna work. I mean, you can't you can't put that on. It's whatever happens happens, right? But but you have people out there that expect that, and good for them, no right or wrong. But those are the main components that I find. And then lastly, I think the one thing that is a problem is it's more of the mutual effort. And I, I talked to somebody about that where they're slowly dissipated, but it was it wasn't about us not having a connection per se. It was more of they were expecting me to always start the day messaging or to be the one. And I look, I want I want to be appreciated as well. I think a mutual enjoyment of dialogue and effort is something that we should try to do. But the conditioning in our society is such that women are not built to reach out to the guy. I'm not saying you have to reach out to me every day, but I have to feel like if I reach out to you, you're going to reach out to me and initiate conversation. You're going to try to initiate something from time to time. It can't be me all the time. It can't be. And what I find myself is after the basic trying to understand each other about things, people don't have much to talk about other than their daily routine. It's like they don't they don't have any type of um, desire to learn about the world of things. They're just more entrenched in their job. 
and their kids and their drama. It's not cool being positive. It's not cool trying to not bask in that. It just feels normal if we just go home and complain and bitch about that shit all day, every day, and let that fester, right? And I I just try to look for those things that I don't want. So when I, and, and I don't know if that's even, and I don't know, someone would be saying, man, man, you, you're really asking for too much. But I've seen them out there. I've seen those kind of women. And, and, I, and I've talked to them. I've become friends with them, you know? So I, I know they're out there. Unfortunately, they're taken. Unfortunately, they're not, um, not in the area. But they, they're out there. You know, they're 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 out there. So that's where, and I don't think what I'm asking for is over the top. If if I was to, and I've talked to people, I've asked people about it, and then they agree. It's like, oh, you know, you're not asking for anything crazy. So it just lets me know how either scarce this area is with dating or. Or I'm just not people's type, which is fine, you know, because I don't cater. And I know that about myself. My flaw is that I don't cater to anybody. Like, I, I let it be known where I, where I stand from the beginning. But that's something being very clear. You know, I, I, I don't I'm not going to say, well, I'm going to be because this is the problem I have. If you start doing things to cater to a woman, to court a woman, to to go out of your way that's going to be the baseline expectation of the relationship there's very few people that are on a, that are aware that it all dies down later on they want that type of attention they want that type of courting from the beginning and then and then and when it falls off or anything like that then they tend to get a little mad at you because at the end true colors come out and I and I know that shoot. I, I had a coworker that the their true colors came out. I was like, okay, took about a year, but <laughs> here we are. Now I know what you're all about. Cool, gotcha. Like I know people eventually show their true colors if you're around them long enough. They can't sustain the the show. They can't sustain the good behavior. They're always gonna have that representative. In the beginning, and then eventually that guy leaves the fuck out of Dodge, and then you get the real person. So I try to understand that that people we're we're not authentic from the beginning. So I let them know, look, I'm all for it. Uh, this is who you're getting all the time. So hopefully you like it. Hopefully you don't. But it, I'm not changing, especially in the beginning. I'm not changing who I am for you. Like I, I'm not doing that. And I don't think I'm a person that's really out there with anything. I'm, I'm willing to compromise on things. And I, I, as long as it doesn't compromise my self-happiness, because it always goes back to that mindset that I said a little bit earlier, which is you want to find somebody that adds to your life. You don't want somebody that is draining you. Like That's where I have that discussion with friends that really want to sell me on you need to settle down or you need to find somebody and I'm like well how do you expect me to settle down when in reality that person doesn't make my life better if anything they're draining me of my energy they're draining me of my finances that there's there's going to be an expectation of time that they want above and beyond what I in my head I'm willing to give so that that's where I look at a scenario and see how that benefits me it's no different than how I've been able to categorize my friends and people in my life where I've said, okay, is this person a positive in my life? Is this person draining me? Is this per you know, whatever it is they're doing to me, I'm going to categorize you and then I'm going to go ahead and put you in the positive or negative, fo you know, show folder. Sorry, I was looking at a car accident here. We still have car accidents after season. Jeez. But that's the... Um, you know, I always analyze it, but it comes back to like-mindedness. Always comes back to that. It's like you, you don't have the, the attraction or the like-mindedness. I find one or the other. I can't find the combo. You know, like I, I could find the, the the big girl that I have no sexual attraction to, and I know that I, I wouldn't want to take a picture with her. <laughs> I mean, that's just, and it sounds bad, but it's a reality. Like that's how I feel anyway. And I'm not trying to knock anybody. For, for me, I just, if I'm not attracted to you, I'm probably not going to want to take a picture with you. 
you know, and I probably don't want to have you seen in public. I mean, it's like because I don't attraction matters to me. You know, attraction matters to a lot of guys. Okay, and if and that's the thing I always uh, tell girls is like, you want to know where you stand with a guy? Take a picture. Take a picture. <laughs> if he finds you attractive, he's not gonna have a problem with sharing a picture with you. You know, like or or if he's not seeing somebody. You know, if they're like, oh, I don't want to take a picture now. You you already know the deal. I, I I don't care what excuse. That's like a girl trying to tell me online. Like you have girls online that still reach out to you with no pictures, and they just let it be known like their job is very sensitive. Like, come on, man. Like, you don't work for the FBI. You're not doing some super spy shit. <laughs> you're not, uh, you know, you're not working for national security where our lives are at stake and you're being hunted by the Muslims, you know, by the extremists. I, my apologies on that. By the extreme uh, terrorist groups out there affiliated with religion, right? And you don't have any of that. So I don't. I guess I don't understand that where people just act that way, but that's dating for you in general, man. You just have the the, the people quirks and personalities, but to go back to that girl that was saying about how girls have a heart, I was like, no, they don't. They don't have a heart. You pick the guy. Now, if the guy treats you like shit, now, you know, like you had Khloe Kardashian put a post up saying something like, hey, if you have a daughter, then you have to imagine yourself basically as if you were dating her would you treat her the way you would treat her mom or something like that basically saying that hey if you have a daughter just think about how you treat the women and it's like get the fuck out of here chloe you picked the fucking guy that was seeing somebody else you poached him out of that relationship and then you had your own kid and you expected him to be faithful to you like really you know and that's the decisions that women make it's like they don't really it's like you would think Khloe Kardashian would have her pickings of men that would be loyal, committed. But yes, yeah, she chooses the NBA player that had a girlfriend that has kids. It's like the challenge. And that's what, you know, the, the girl was saying that in a podcast. She was saying that it, it's that girls tend to overlook the guy with the Honda Civic. Even though he checks off the list in a lot of ways. It's like they, they, they go ahead and they ignore the guy that maybe doesn't have anything uh, exciting showing about them. But he's an awesome guy, you know. And I get it because it's no, it's no different than my standards of attraction. It's no different than a woman's uh, attraction or standards of what a man has. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I totally get it. So there, there, there's absolutely no right or wrong in that. I really don't feel that way. I think that when it comes to how you want things done or how who you want to be with, there's no right or wrong. I think you, you go for it, you live life, and enjoy yourself, right? And you find a situation that makes you happy. But at the end, you know, you got to you gotta know what makes you happy. And you got to be realistic with your goals.